It's between now and September 30th, even though his own party leaders say sequestration threatens the nation's security, military readiness, and the economy. Now, Senator Paul wants us to believe sequestration is a good thing, and the president is just overreacting. The sequester is a slowdown in the rate of growth of government. It's the least we can do for the president to use this histrionics is really, I think, beneath the office of the presidency. Well, let's get some reaction tonight from our panel. Michelle, Michelle Goldberg joins us of Newsweek of the Daily Beast. John Nichols of the Washington, of the Washington Correspondent of the Nation magazine. And also with us tonight, political strategist Angela Rye. Great to have all of you with us tonight. Thank is you. is the president overreacting? Let's just say that Rand Paul is spot on. John Nichols, is the president overreacting? He absolutely is not overreacting. The sequester is austerity. It is, it's not slowing the rate of growth. Our population is growing. Our needs are growing. If you slow down the amount of spending you've got at a time when you have growth in population, you are making severe cuts. And the sequester is really the first installment on an austerity agenda that poses huge threats, according to government and private sector analyses, to our employment rate, to our potential for growth. So, no, the president's not. The president's neither lying nor is he being, uh, you know, histrionic or overboard. On Angela, this. what is the Republican strategy here? I don't know what the Republican strategy is, but it looks to me like there is not one. They're saying different things, they are reacting on different points, and none of them make sense to me. At the end of the day, when you talk about sequestration or across-the-board cuts, as they're more commonly known, we're talking about things that impact the lives of real people. They want to see small government. Well, small government doesn't work when you have a large population, whether it's food inspectors or health care programs or cuts to education programs that are vital to the success of our country we're talking about a massive issue here it's not about there's no there's no dream or nightmare really is what sequestration would be all about it's not it's not fake this is a real issue that deserves real attention we cannot continue to have these yeah. piecemeal solutions that uh, continue to put us in a crisis governance mode we just can't do it anymore and Michelle Goldberg what do we see the Republicans do here they're calling the president a liar they're saying he doesn't have a plan uh, they say that this is all his fault. Uh, well, they're doing they... a bunch of different things, right? I mean, on, on the one hand, you have some Republicans like Rand Paul saying that the sequester is no big deal, that if it went into effect, it would slow the rate of government, which is the entire, you know, their kind of entire reason for being. At the same time, you have other Republicans saying this isn't our fault. This was all Obama's idea. They want to get as far away from any responsibility for the sequester as they can. Um, you know, I think kind of depends on how much they have drunk their own Kool-Aid. And that's a battle that you see within the Republican Party. People who are true believers in the Tea Party ideology and maybe people like, like John Boehner who are willing to humor it, but at the end of the day kind of know that a lot of these policies, if enacted, will be catastrophic and that the Republicans will be blamed for them. What do you think, John? Are they just going to go with these, uh, this, sequ uh, this sequester, hit the deadline, uh, let it start to peel on the economy a little bit and just continue to blame the president. Do they think they can turn the numbers in their favor with this strategy? Well, from what I hear, talking to Republicans and Democrats, there is a view within the mainstream of the Republican Party, not the Rand Paul fringe, but the mainstream, that they should let the sequester go forward uh, on the theory that they need to tell their base that they are standing up to Obama. When the president stepped up and said, we have to do something, uh, the base immediately said, oh, no, if the president wants it, we don't want it. Uh, it appears that even some of the supposedly more sensible players in the Republican Party are willing to let the sequester happen, willing to let the pain happen yeah. to satisfy their base. Michelle, who pays the political price on this once it all plays out? Well, I would like to think that the Republicans will pay the political price, and it seems likely. I mean, given the kind of popularity ratings of the Republican Party and of Congress more generally, and it seems that you can't quite, you can't say, as some of them are trying to say, that the sequester isn't a big deal, but that all of the pain from it is going to be Obama's fault. When people start feeling these cuts in their real lives, 
as they're going to, it's going to be pretty obvious who, who, it, who it's been that's been willing to kind of shut down the government or derail the economy in order to force these austerity measures. I mean, we have gone from Boehner in the summer of 2011 saying he got 98% of what he wanted to all of a sudden this is all the president's fault as we're at this point right now. They don't know what they want. They're an unguided missile the way it sounds politically. And they're searching for an identity and they're just going to let this go through because they're in the whole thing. Let's talk about another member of the Tea Party smear team. Rookie Texas Senator Ted Cruz is reportedly a accusing Harvard Law School of harboring communists. Mm -hmm. The New Yorker posted this story today, quoting a speech Ted Cruz gave while he was campaigning a couple of years ago. Cruz reportedly said the communists were members of the Harvard Law faculty while he was there between 1992 and 1995. Cruz refused to comment on the speech today. Uh, Senator Cruz was recently criticized for making some unverified allegations against Chuck Hagel last month. Uh, Angela, what about this? Is, is Cruz just trying to make a name for himself for the Tea Party, or he is, is he really on a witch hunt? I mean, Senator Cruz is a rebel without a legitimate cause. I don't know what is going on with him, but every time you turn around, there's some new hyperbole that he's spewing. And, it, and today, to see him talking about, you know, the president is the most radical president ever. I'm sorry, but I want to know what the definition of radical is because to me, radical is a president who would come up with a mass communications campaign to deceive the American public into believing there's weapons of mass destruction. I hardly see anything that President Obama has yeah. done as radical. Senator Barbara Boxer uh, loosely compared Ted Cruz to Joe McCarthy. John Nichols, your thoughts. Is that a fair comparison? Sure it is. When you suggest that there are communists on a faculty, and then when you're pressed about it, you don't answer the questions, you, you play around with it, um, that's McCarthyite tactics. Now, the one thing that's really important, though, is to not focus so much on Ted Cruz, but to focus on the leadership of the Republican Party. In the 1960s and the 1970s, William F. Buckley and Barry Goldwater and Ronald Reagan called out members of their own party when they went to fringe arguments, when they went to extremes, when they made claims that were not legitimate. The problem with Ted Cruz, not Ted Cruz, it is leaders of his party, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, and others, who don't call him out for language Michelle, like this. Michelle, you think Republican leadership will do that? Um, I can't see what they have to gain from it. I mean, you've seen a little, a few attempts to reign in Ted Cruz. You know, McCain um, called him out. Lindsey Graham called him out for some of his outrageous... Mitch McConnell's got his own problems to worry about instead of calling out Ted Cruz, wouldn't you think, Michelle? <laughs> but part of it is that the party, is that the, the, the leaders of the party, um, even very conservative leaders, are so incredibly cowed by their base. You know, for a long time you had a party that very adroitly whipped up the frustrations and paranoia and yeah. suspicions of their base, they are no longer controlling the base. The base controls them. And so there's not much leverage they have over they, it. They've got just enough control to screw things up so legislatively nothing gets done. That's about where they are right now. Let's talk about another Texan uh, representative, Louis Gomart, and his bizarre claims about guns and Sharia law. Here it is. We've got some people that think Sharia law ought to be the law of the land, forget the Constitution. But uh, the guns are there. That Second Amendment is there to make sure all of the rest of the amendments are followed. Oh, what about that, <laughs> Angela? Well, first and foremost, I want to say that America is a land of laws. We have the United States Constitution that have laws that are enacted on a regular basis. Sharia law is not one of them. The disrespect to Islam notwithstanding, this is highly problematic. There are no facts given on, in these opinions that they constantly, you know, put out. They get airtime. I'm trying to understand the standard for obstruction of justice at this point. This is illegitimate points they consistently make, and they get airtime and 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 space and papers for this. It's just yeah. outrageous to me. It All really right. is. Michelle Goldberg, John Nichols, Angela Rye, great to have you on The Ed Show tonight. Appreciate your time. It was an emotional day in court for a star Oscar.